Welcome. My name is David Bainbridge. I've been a restoration ecologist for almost 40 years. And today I'd like to talk to you about wick irrigation. It's a way to minimize water use, maximize long-term survival on remote sites. This is nothing new. The first descriptions I found were in India, and they combined wicks with oya irrigation. The wicks of cotton threaded in holes in the oyas increased root development and extension. There are a number of advantages for using wicks. Very low water use, low cost, uh, reliable, they promote root extension, and they can even be structured to increase wind firmness. Wicks can be capillary or gravity fed. The capillary wicks have a short run up from a supply and move water by capillary action in the small spaces of the wick. This leads to very low flow. Gravity wicks flow from a supply down with a much higher flow rate. It requires very simple tools, as you see. The capillary flow path is so low that you don't need a control valve. Water may last for several weeks, even from a one liter jug. The roots adapt well to the moist wick. Flow may be inadequate for larger plants or seedlings. The length of the tube and the height of the tallest part of the tube affect flow, as does the diameter of the wick. It's a good idea to test any wick material you're considering. It's easy to do. Just hang it with a tip in the water, colored with food coloring, and follow the rise of water. New ropes may need to be washed, as sometimes they have oil added during the processing and manufacturing. Polypropylene rope will not flow. Here are the results from just one test. The polyester rope was particularly good, rising to more than 45 centimeters. In an early water test, I used a 2-liter water bottle as a reservoir, a 6-millimeter used nylon rope with 38 centimeters exposed, laid horizontally on a cement walk, in an area that got sun several hours every day. Every day, the wick was wetted right to the end every morning, and sometimes even during the day. 60 days later, the water use total was just 850 milliliters, or 14 milliliters per day. It acts almost like an IV for humans, with very little waste. It's easy to use a capillary wick to water a plant while you're on vacation as well. This is long known as an option, and was even featured in 1955 in Popular Science. I thought wicks might make sense for my desert restoration work, so the first test I did was in 1989 with a bottle reservoir, a 5 millimeter cotton wick, and it worked for a while, but it developed mold and algae from the sunlight on the cotton, and that reduced the already low water use to too low water use. Tree seedling survival was improved, but there was very little growth with these wicks. I tried again with the same rope and wick on a horizontal four inch pipe reservoir, a drain pipe turned upside down, and the wicks ran from the pipe up to the roots of the plant. The pipe was filled periodically through an elbow at one end. Again, this helped survival, but flow was too limited for much growth. I also tried capillary wicks in the garden, but it didn't work. The rise and run of the wicks and tubes were too long and the flow rate was too small. For any larger plants, you'll need gravity wicks. A wick should be washed. Use a mesh bag or a tied off pillowcase, or you could have a terrible tangle in your washing machine. The end should not be melted shut. But shaping the end by melting can help insert the wicks into tubes, then cut off the melted part. Or even easier, use a wick puller like this and just pull the wire into the tubing with a hook. Here's a simple garden pot with a wick coming from underneath. Very simple, worked very well. And here's an example for a larger pot. This plastic insert provides uh, air space so the roots of the plant don't get waterlogged. The wick runs from the reservoir up into the planting mix in the root zone. You can try it at home just with a wick herb pot. Here we have oregano. It's a good candidate for a capillary wick because the water use is low. Larger leafed herbs might require more water, and most crops require a gravity wick instead. 
Here's an example of upgrading a wick watered container with an additional wick. This clever hanging planter comes with a thin flat wick which water rises up from a reservoir to the plant zone. More flow was needed so I added a rope wick to water the soil more completely. Tools and supplies are readily available in most places or you can order them online. Just make sure the rope is polyester or nylon, solid braid seems to work best. Plastic sleeve tubing is available at most hardware stores, hose clamps at auto supply stores, and the plastic fittings for reservoir to tubing can be found at some hardware stores, scientific supply, or grangers. And in a gravity flow, the wick runs through a clear plastic tube from the reservoir to the roots of the plants. A control valve is usually needed to reduce the water flow. Recycled jugs and bottles are what I've used for most often. They're cheap, just make sure they're clean. Five gallons is good for remote sites or lazy gardeners. Drill a hole with a spade bit the same size as the fitting thread. Then apply polyurethane glue and screw in the fitting and let it set. The barb on the outside accepts the vinyl tubing. Here's a diagram of gravity flow in a wick for one test. You can see that the water reached 240 centimeters in just eight minutes, and it reached nine feet in 14 minutes. This just shows that you need an adjustable clamp for flow rate. You can start with the lower flow rate at the beginning of the season and then increase it as the plants grow larger. Tried it on crops as well. Here's a 16 inch nylon wick being used to grow corn with a three liter reservoir. The water use was high enough that it had to be refilled every three to four days. A 20 liter jug would have been better but would cost more. Corn and squash were grown at the Tree of Life nursery test plot and worked relatively well. Here you can see that the wick and clay pots tied for tassels, but the wick had slightly more ears of corn. All received the same amount of water, just a liter per day. Contrast this with the water rates usual for drip, which is as much as a gallon per hour, or much higher flow rates for flood irrigation. The corn was sometimes a bit stressed. The squash plants grew, but few squash produced any fruit and there were virtually no weeds. Several people have suggested trying horizontal wicks, so I did. It didn't work. You can see in this picture of corn seedlings the decline in water availability along the horizontal wick. The first plant uses more and more water as it grows larger and larger. It's always a good idea to test and compare uh, whatever you're doing. Here's a comparison of watering rates with a vent or unvented reservoir. Blue food coloring just makes it easier to see. The sealed cap greatly reduced water flow. The vented cap with a wide open two meter long wick flowed up to 400 milliliters per hour versus the capillary wick of perhaps 20 milliliters per day. I tried the gravity wick test out near the Salton Sea at a site that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit any month gets three inches of rain per year. The five gallon jug is used with 7 16 solid braid nylon rope washed. It has a screw type hose clamp to adjust flow. The tree shelter helps reduce plant water demand and also protects the tree seedling from grazing by rabbits. Survival 100%. Here you can see the details a little better of the vinyl tubing, the screw clamp, the wick, and the planting hole. The Groasis integrated irrigation system works well but requires rain. The water is collected in a reservoir and then is fed to the roots of the tree by a wick. The cost is relatively high, but it's an interesting process. The orchard wick system developed by Preslov Trenchev is much cheaper and also very promising. Rainwater is collected in a plastic sheet lining a furrow and flows to the deep pool. 
the wick goes down from the pool into the soil by the tree roots, and this has worked very well for him for orchard starts. Wicks can also help improve root growth towards groundwater. If the groundwater is at 8, 10, or even 15 or 20 feet, if the plants can reach it, they can stay alive. But how do you get them across that gap? Well, a wick may be the way to do it. It can provide gravity flow at the top, and then capillary rise from the groundwater from the bottom. And that might be just what's needed. Wicks can be driven in some types of soil with a steel bar with a specially shaped fork tip. You can also dig the normal planting hole and then drive the wick even further. I've gone up to 18 or 20 inches, but with a hydraulic ram on a tractor, you could do it much deeper. Also, with sandy soils or dunes, the wick could be driven much deeper, and that could be very helpful. There are many other types of wicks and wick uses. Capillary mats beneath container plants are now being used in many nurseries to ensure even water availability for all the containers. This was made possible by thanks to my wife, uh, students, staff, and friends. John Rieger, Pam Bear, and Ross, Virginia provided fundings for some of this research. And the field trials were made possible by support from Scott Murray, a farm advisor, and Mike Evans at the Tree of Life Nursery for test plots. More information from my books, Gardening with Less Water in 2015, and a guide for desert and dryland restoration in 2007. More detailed reports on specific uses can be found at the BE Press site. My research continues, and I expect to have a new WIC system available in 2022. I wish you the very best with your WIC system.